Okay, before I get started, I'd just like to say channel memberships are now live, and for a small amount, you can help support and grow this channel. With that said, let's get right into it. The Darksaber, an enigmatic status symbol that originated with House Vizsla. It changed hands quite a few times to successors of the Vizsla name. However, since the Clone Wars, it has been bounced around to non vizslas and even non-Mandalorians by means of Darth Maul, Kanan Jarrus, and Moff Gideon. Yes, I know Kanan didn't technically wield it, but he was in possession of it for a short period. Now, it resides with our Mandalorian hero, Din Djarin, who may or may not be force sensitive. That's up for debate at the moment. But, should it continue to exist as a symbol of leadership and power? I've heard from some viewers that it should remain viable, that it is a Mandalorian symbol of and a cultural thing. Well, let me dispel some of this. Don't worry, I do think you all have valid arguments, and if it continues to be just that, I'm okay with it. However, this is about reasons it should be destroyed. I know I posted a video recently about the history of the Darksaber, but I will recap that for just a bit. Yes, I have a point for doing so, and I will link the full story video in the description of this video as well as at the end of this video. The Darksaber was created 1041 years prior to the events of The Mandalorian Season 2 by the only Mandalorian inducted into the Jedi Order, Tar Vizsla. Tar was a great Jedi warrior and went on to be the leader of the Mandalorian people. However, after his passing, the Darksaber was taken to the Jedi Temple where members of House Vizsla broke in and took it. From the end of the Old Republic until the middle of the Clone Wars, it was passed down from generation to generation to an heir of the Vizsla name. That is, until pre vizsla was defeated by Maul in single combat. Maul then took the blade and deemed himself leader of the Mandalorian people. After that, it was up in the air if the current wielder was defeated in single combat. Even though House Vizsla held the Darksaber for about 1009 years, only one Vizsla was the rightful leader of Mandalorian society, Tar Vizsla, the creator of the Darksaber. However, Vizslas had always been in charge of Death Watch, the political organization that believed Mandalorians should return to their roots as conquerors and warlike people. Once Pre Vizsla was killed by Maul, Death Watch mostly disbanded or was rebranded as Maul's Super Commandos under the umbrella of the Shadow Collective. Maul's criminal organization made up of multiple groups of underworld criminals. Since Tar Vizsla, Maul had been the only one to use the Darksaber as a symbol of divine right. But, like I said, it was used to lead House Vizsla. But for 32 years, it has been used as a symbol of power and authority over the entirety of the Mandalorian people. A relatively short period when you factor in the age of the weapon. But, this isn't the sole reason the Darksaber is obsolete. Also, as I said before, the Darksaber was created by a Jedi, the only Mandalorian Jedi in current canon. He used the weapon for good, to be a protector of peace, as the Jedi were. He also wielded it as the leader of the Mandalorian people. But this was after he left the Jedi Order, and he used it as a means of unifying Mandalore rather than segregating most people. It was a time of prosperity, if you believe the legends and tales told through centuries to Mandalorian children. However, since Tar Vizsla's death, House Vizsla, and really all of Mandalore, has had a distrust of the Jedi Order and all Force wielders, even waging war on them a time or two. When we get to pre Vizsla, he tells Obi Wan Kenobi, This lightsaber was stolen from your Jedi Temple by my ancestors during the fall of the Old Republic. Since then, many Jedi have died upon its blade. Prepare yourself to join them. End quote. So, this means the blade has not been used as it was intended for centuries. In fact, it has been killing members of the Jedi Order, the same order it was created through. Okay, let's move on to the Mandalorian series for just a moment. Din Djarin gained possession of the Darksaber through beating Moff Gideon in single combat. 
During the journey to get to the Imperial leader, Din Djarin has created a clan of two, Clan Mudhorn. In that clan was Din Djarin himself and Grogu, a Force-sensitive Jedi in training before the fall of the Jedi Order. They developed a special bond, such a special bond that Mando encountered two others of the Order, Ahsoka Tano, who was formerly a Jedi Padawan under Anakin Skywalker's tutelage, and Luke Skywalker, a Jedi and son of Anakin Skywalker, and Padawan to Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Both encounters were favorable to the Mandalorian bounty hunter, with the latter even taking Grogu on as an apprentice and swearing his life to protect the 50-year-old toddler. What does this have to do with the Darksaber, though? Everything. The Mandalorian is moving in a direction that may mend the wounds between Jedi and Mandalorians. With Din Djarin front and center and showing compassion for the Force-sensitive Grogu and allowing his foundling to go off with a Jedi to be trained. With the Darksaber being created by a Jedi, then used as a weapon to kill Jedi by House Vizsla, the status symbol will not be favorable for the diplomacy of the two groups. It is actually a slap in the face to the Jedi for a Mandalorian to use it as a symbol of authority. Made by a Jedi to use for peace and protection, then taken by those wanting power and used to kill members of the very order that dedicated themselves as p defenders of the peace. But is that reason enough to destroy the blade? Why not just hand it off to the new generation of Jedi to keep safe as a relic for their order? Well, let's put it in real world terms without going too over the top with it. How many Chinese do you know that collect Japanese officer swords from World War II? I'd venture to say not many. This isn't a dig at any race, it's just a part of human history. So I'd say any Jedi that knows what the Darksaber is would not want it in their collection. Let's not forget the fact that any rogue Mandalorian would go after the blade and kill its current owner to obtain it. I'm looking at you, Bo-Katan Kreese. But is this enough to destroy the blade? Maybe, but not entirely. My next point is the blade's actual use. Not only was it used to kill Jedi, but it was used to kill Mandalorians as well. The very people they claimed to lead with the blade was being used to murder those they considered their subjects. It was divisive, to say the least. It caused factions to split from Mandalorian society and create their own rules, hence the creation of Death Watch. Not to mention, it was only passed down in succession to one house, House Vizsla. The blade caused more wars with Mandalorians than peace by uniting the Mandalorian people under one leader. But is this enough to destroy the blade? Sure is, but there still is more. Let's look at those who have possessed the blade. Tar Vizsla, a great Jedi and a leader of the Mandalorian people. But he didn't use the Darksaber as a symbol of his rule. It was his character that united the Mandalorian people. Again, if the children's stories are to be believed. It wasn't until centuries later that someone claimed it as their symbol of divine right, Maul. But how many Mandalorians honored him as the leader of the Mandalorian people, just because he had the blade? Other than his super commandos who were formerly Death Watch? None. In fact, he placed Prime Minister Almec as the figurehead leader of Mandalore, so there wouldn't be any uprising against a non-Mandalorian leader. Let's not forget the Mandalorian people recognized Almec as leader due to his status under the former leader, Duchess Satine Kreese. Almec was the next in line of succession had anything happened to her. It was a smart choice on Maul's part, but no one saw him as the leader. Okay, moving on. Sabine Wren also possessed the Darksaber. She didn't even consider herself the leader of the Mandalorian people. In fact, she gave it to her own mother and was betrayed by her mother, and eventually she gave it to Bo-Katan Kreese, who actually was seen as the leader of the Mandalorian people for a short time, until the Empire came in and took the Darksaber. Which leads me to Moff Gideon. Was he seen as the Mandalorian leader just because he had the Darksaber? Nope. In fact, Din Djarin didn't even know who he was. Had D Gideon been the undisputed leader, Din Djarin's organization, the Children of the Watch, would have told him about it, or at least the Darksaber's divine power. 
Din Djarin didn't even know what the Dark Saber was. And that brings me to the current wielder of the Black Blade. Din Djarin. Does anyone see him as the undisputed Mandalore? Well, the only Mandalorians that know he has it are Bo-Katan Kreese and Casca Reeves. And they don't seem to accept his authority. In fact, one can tell Bo-Katan is already plotting how she will get it away from Mando. Again causing division in the Mandalorian people. So when you boil it down to its simplest terms, only two Mandalorians that we know of have been recognized as the divine leader of Mandalore while holding the blade, Tar Vizsla, and some 1,000 years later, Bo-Katan Kreese. The Darksaber has never been recognized as a symbol of divine right, only by a few outside House Vizsla. So, with its creation by a Jedi, then its use to kill members of the same order, the deaths of many Mandalorians by those who have wielded it, and the fact it has not been recognized by all of Mandalorian society, it has no place in existence anymore. It has divided more than it is unified, and not just with the Mandalorian people, but throughout the galaxy. The Darksaber needs to be destroyed, not wielded. There is one Mandalorian artifact that could be seen as a symbol of divine leadership, though. The Mask of Mandalore. I will get into that in another video, though. So what do you think? Should the Darksaber continue as a symbol of Mandalorian leadership, or should it be destroyed? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're new here, go on and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to stay up to date on all my Mandalorian lore, Star Wars theories, and discussions. Also, hit the thumbs up to show your love for the video and the channel. Help me blow this channel up by getting this to 1,000 views. Thank you for watching, and remember, this is the way. The only way.